For this lesson, we're going to cover how we nest audio inside of a track view sequence. So this is going to be a little bit different from the entities that we strictly have because we're going to use a tag point and we're going to use flow graph in that tag point, but totally separate of it, we're actually just housing the tag point entity inside of the track so that it has a place for it to play based on if we do a game start in our level. So let's get started by going to an actual tag point. And where tag points are, are in the AI section. And we can click, and we need to make sure that we have snap to, to, snap to geometry on. So we're going to have that up, and let's disable the snap to geometry now, because we want to move it upward. And we'll call this one audio underscore tag. And let's go down here and create a flow graph. So we're going to right click, and we'll call this audio underscore FG. So now we've created a flow graph. We are ready to go into track view actually because we need to nest the sound. So I'm going to go to tools, track view, and we'll open track view and we need to create a new sequence. So let's call this the track underscore track view. And we have basically an empty track and what we need to do is assign or stick this actual tag point inside of the track. To do so, with the tag point selected, we're going to click Add Selected Entities. So the audio tag has been put in there, and what we need to do now is supply a track for the audio to play in. So if I right-click right -click on the tag and go to Add Track, we can go to Sound. So now we have a sound, and what we can do is double-click in the timeline to add it. So if I select this keyframe, let's go ahead and put this at like 0.1. I will warn you that you don't want to put it on zero because the engine actually has a hard time interpreting where zero is when you start. So if you were to jump into the game and then it was at zero, it may not play. We want to make the duration, this is in seconds, to 10. And we actually want to choose a start trigger. So clicking in the start trigger box, we can go to one of these. Maybe it'll be closed. I kind of prefer the thunder because it's very apparent. So clicking into that, we now have a start trigger of thunder that should play out. If we push forward, you can hear it. So let's go ahead and close track view, and we're ready to go into flow graph, which Let's put this down in the bottom here so we can use it. And we want to add a start node because we're going to start this. And then we're going to go to the animation side. And we're going to choose play sequence. So this sequence right here is actually just looking for a track view sequence. And it's the track track view that we had. And so we can connect the output of game start to the start trigger of our sequence. I'll put on the debug so we can watch it should go there automatically. And then I'm going to jump in. And you can see we already have the thunder playing out just as we had set up inside of the track. And this isn't just limited to one sound. You can add multiple entities that maybe would be playing over this. Like maybe a car goes by or even more thunder, wind, whatever. You can nest them all inside of track view to be able to add a lot of uh, depth and motivation within your scenes. So I hope you enjoyed this video on track and track view and how you can maybe combine it with the ambient volumes with the shapes to really make your scene and level pop.